you know that during World War II, Soviet women took up arms and became some of the most feared and effective snipers on the battlefield, challenging gender norms and defying the expectations of their time. Today, we delve into the untold stories of these remarkable women who bravely served on the Eastern Front. From Ludmila Pavlichenko, known as Lady Death, with over 300 confirmed kills, to Zoya Kosmodomiaskaya, who faced execution rather than betray her comrades, their sacrifices and courage are nothing short of extraordinary. But amidst the valor and heroism lies a shocking reality, the treatment of captured Soviet female soldiers by the Germans. Stay tuned to discover the incredible tales of resilience, sacrifice, and defiance against tyranny. These stories are not only a testament to the strength of the human spirit, but also serve as a reminder of the importance of honoring the often overlooked contributions of women in history. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more captivating stories of courage and resilience throughout history. During World War II, one of the most remarkable and often overlooked aspects of the conflict was the significant participation of Soviet women in combat roles, particularly as snipers. This phenomenon represented a stark departure from traditional general norms and cultural expectations, both within the Soviet Union and in comparison to the ideologies of Nazi Germany. Several nations, including Britain, the United States, and the Soviet Union, enlisted women into their ranks, assigning them pivotal roles such as mechanics, pilots, radio operators, clerks, and nurses. Among these nations, the Soviet Union boasted the largest contingent of women in its armed forces, with an estimated 800,000 women serving, many of whom engaged in combat roles like snipers and pilots. However, despite their courage and valor, female soldiers faced the constant risk of capture by the Nazis. The German army initiated Operation Barbarossa on June 22, 1941, marking the invasion of the Soviet Union. The surprise assault by German forces disrupted the Soviet Union's initial strategy, resulting in considerable losses for the already strained Soviet forces. This plunged Soviet Union into a quandary of dwindling troop numbers. Following this profoundly tragic episode, the Soviet Union had no choice but to opt for the increased enlistment of female soldiers. Unlike previous conquests in Poland, France, and Norway, the Germans were taken aback by the presence of women wielding arms and operating field weaponry within the ranks of the Russian forces. Approximately 2,500 women served as snipers in the Soviet Red Army. These women, often hailed as courageous and skilled markswomen, played a crucial role in combat operations, targeting German soldiers with deadly precision. Despite the inherent dangers and challenges they faced, around 500 of these female snipers managed to survive the war their combined tally of kill claims is at least 11,000. Indeed, the pride of the Nazis took a significant blow. While Nazis reluctantly accepted women for support roles, frontline combat was forbidden. In contrast, the Soviet Union embraced women as equals in combat roles. Soviet women served bravely, defending their homeland in crucial positions like anti-aircraft batteries and fighter pilots. So, what happened to the captured female soldiers? A significant number of female soldiers eagerly joined the battlefield, including some who were barely of age, yet played pivotal roles in the war effort. This courageous display challenged the notion that women were inferior to men. Indeed, the young woman of the fighting nation proved to be remarkably brave. Although the Soviet female soldiers were hastily trained and deployed to the front lines, many lacked extensive experience with the intricate weaponry they were given. Consequently, despite bolstering the Soviet ranks, they were unable to avert defeat, resulting in a large number of them being captured in battle. Nevertheless, the Soviet female soldiers remained a source of frustration for the Nazis. Upon capture, these resilient women braced themselves for the worst. While swift death at the hands of the Nazis might have been considered a mercy, the ruthless regime had no intentions of granting such reprieve. Once in the clutches of the Nazi officers within concentration camps, these female Soviet soldiers were dehumanized and subjected to relentless torture and interrogation. The Nazis, capable of unspeakable atrocities against the Jewish population, demonstrated no restraint in their treatment of enemies, viewing these captured women as inferior beings, deserving of the cruelest treatment imaginable. 
In October 1941, Field Marshal Fauter von Reichenau, commanding the German 6th Army, issued specific instructions for dealing with captured partisans, women soldiers, and Soviet military commissars. They were all to be executed immediately following capture. However, not all female Soviet soldiers were immediately executed. Many were subject to horrific sexual assault before being killed. Others were taken prisoner and handed over to the SS, as the army lacked prisoner of war facilities for women. These unfortunate women largely ended up in Ravensbrück, Germany's largest concentration camp for women, or Auschwitz-Birkenau Women's Camp. At one time or another, about 18,000 Soviet female prisoners of war were held at Ravensbrück. Many Soviet women soldiers chose to commit suicide when faced with imminent capture, while the Germans executed thousands. These female soldiers captured at Ravensbrück were subject to forced labor often producing clothing for the German army under harsh conditions. Any disobedience was met with punishment, with beatings being considered mild and access to medical treatment was often denied. Many of these women were compelled to continue working despite their injuries, leading to a rise in mortality rates. One formal prisoner vividly recalled the stark reality. They didn't shoot the woman. We were to die of misery, hunger and exhaustion. Ravensbrück was the worst. The first thing I saw was a cart piled with the dead, limbs hanging out, mouths and eyes open wide. We were reduced to nothing, not even feeling as valuable as cattle. We worked and we died. Daily life at Ravensbrook was agonizing, with forced labor being one of the most torturous aspects. Inmates, including many tasked with building components of the B-2 rocket, tailored long hours in nearby factories. Additionally, a horrifying industry thrived within the camp as women were coerced into brothels at Nazi camps, resulting in rapid deaths due to abuse due to disease transmission. The camp also housed a gas chamber near the crematoria, where thousands of women were murdered before liberation. Within Ravensbrück, a torture center known as the Bunker contained solitary confinement cells where women endured starvation, beatings, and executions, sometimes carried out in public to instill fear among inmates. Without obtaining consent, medical experiments were conducted on these women, the initial type aimed to assess the effectiveness of sulfonamide drugs. These experiments involved initial incisions into leg bones and muscles, infecting them with highly virulent bacteria, severing nerves, introducing foreign substances such as wood or glass within tissues, and causing bone fractures. The second set of experiments focused on investigating the regeneration of bone, muscle, and nerves, along with exploring the feasibility of bone transplants between individuals. As night descended, they would be taken by soldiers, their suffering continuing in the form of nightly torture sessions, forced to toil tirelessly during the day and endure humiliation at night. Countless female soldiers perished in anguish, their tears a testament to the cruelty they endured. Some inmates were forcibly sterilized and guards often inflicted additional suffering through beatings and hangings for resistance. Following the war, the Ravensbrück trials saw numerous SS guards and staff including female members sentenced to death for war crimes. Despite being an exclusively women's camp, Ravensbrück mirrored other deadly camps with its rampant disease, violence, and executions. One of the most famous female soldiers was Zoya Kosmo Demianskaya. In a village of Obukovhoyo, near Narofominsk, Kosmo Demianskaya and other partisans daringly crossed the front lines, infiltrating German-occupied territory. However, her mission was cut short when she was apprehended by the Nazis near the village of Petrischevo in late November 1941. Despite enduring brutal torture and humiliation, Cosmo Demianskaya remained steadfast, refusing to betray her comrades or reveal her true identity, instead claiming to be Tanya. Tragically, she was executed by hanging. It was claimed that before her death, Cosmo Demianskaya had made a speech with the closing words, there are 200 million of us, you can't hang us all. Her unwavering courage and sacrifice led to a posthumous recognition as the first woman to be awarded the title of Hero of the Soviet Union during the war. Ludmila Pavlichenko, renowned as one of the deadliest snipers in history, achieved a staggering 309 confirmed kills of German soldiers following the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941. Many of her targets were enemy snipers, earning her the nickname Lady Death for her lethal accuracy during the sieges of Sevastopol and Odessa. 
Despite her formidable reputation, Pavlichenko was eventually wounded by a mortar round and withdrew from the front lines. She then became a prominent figure in propaganda efforts for the Red Army, serving as a symbol of courage and resilience. According to gender equality activist Irina Slavinska, the Soviet narrative for World War II predominantly focused on the image of a brave male soldier, sidelining the contributions of women like Pavlichenko. As a result, her story was often omitted or downplayed in historical records. In reflecting on the treatment of captured Soviet female soldiers by the Germans during World War II, we are confronted with a dark chapter of history, one that underscores the depth of human cruelty and the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable adversity. The stories of these brave women, from Ludmila Pavlyshenko's lethal precision as a sniper to Zoya Kosmodemianskaya's unyielding defiance in the face of death, serves as poignant reminders of the sacrifices made by countless individuals who dare to challenge tyranny and oppression. Despite the horrors they endured, torture, sexual assault, and dehumanization, these women stood unwavering in their commitment to their comrades and their cause. Their unwavering courage, even in the face of certain death, speaks to the indomitable strength of the human spirit and the enduring power of hope in the darkest of times. As we honor the memory of these forgotten heroes, let us not only pay tribute to the extraordinary bravery, but also reaffirm our commitment to preserving their legacy and ensuring that their stories are never forgotten. For in bearing witness to their suffering and sacrifice, we are reminded of the true cost of freedom and the imperative to never take it for granted.